Choose the form of the destructor. Greetings, fellow islanders, extraterrestrials, and men of culture. We meet again. Today, we will take another trip into the Hellhole, which is only known as the Isle. Today's subject is a beast of such ill repute that only few dare talk about it. It is the Pachycephalosaurus. Cast it into the fire! It means thick-headed lizard in Greek. It lived 72.1 million years ago to 66 million years ago. Or so, scientists would have you believe. But to the creatures on the isle, the truth is well known. The Pachys were indeed spawned in the deepest forges of hell. They have been given shapes of flesh to terrorize, brutalize and mutilate all that walk the earth. In fact, the only thing more evil than a Pachycephalosaurus is a killer tomato. But that is a story for another time. The Pachys are cruel and notoriously evil. They have no sense of sportsmanship and mercy and compassion are no more known than to any other animal. They are cruel and sadistic, finding pleasure in causing pain. They use their powerful leg muscles to hurl themselves at their enemies, hitting them with their thick horned dragon-like skulls, breaking bones and skulls alike. They enjoy ambushing those bigger than themselves, breaking their legs, and then staying back yelling you mama jokes until something even bigger senses the wounded animal and comes to finish it off. Like this Paki here who works with the slow but powerful Stegosaurus. But today, we will not talk about this mix-packing swine. This is Brian. Brian, eh? At first glance, he appears as any ordinary herbivore. Me. But do not be deceived, for Brian knows what he is. Evil? Yes, Brian is evil. <laughs> The life of Brian was a lonely one. He had no friends, and his mother didn't like him much. Now that he's all grown up, he feels he has no need of such sentimental nonsense. All he wants to do is to live up to his nickname as a Bonkasaurus. That means boinking. I mean bonking anything and everything. Brian travels in solitude, enjoying his own company, eating fruits and other vegetarian rabbit food. As he gets further south, he meets another Paki. The two of them become friends. The other Paki is called James. They are not alone, though. There's a whole herd of Tenos nesting in the area. 
The Tenontosaurus is an intellectually inferior species to the brilliant Pachycephalosaurus, but they can be manipulated to act as guard dogs, bitch-slapping carnivore intruders with their mighty tails if these enter into Pachy territory. The war in Ukraine is nearing its third year. Today, in a press conference, Vladimir Putin said that they still haven't found any dinosaurs, but the special operation will continue. Vice President and Hollywood superstar Nicolas Cage commented, I have never heard anything like this. And back to the aisle. We have some bad news. It seems there is a missing piece of drone footage. Apparently, our two vegetarian superstars entered into combat with a ferocious Carnotaurus. During this conflict, James was killed. We have managed to salvage the recording after his murder, which depicts Brian locked in combat with this brutal predator. The operator responsible for the drone recordings has been sacked. Brian manages to break his opponent's leg. His efforts do not come without a cost. Brian is wounded and bleeding badly, but stubborn as he is, he will not let his enemy go. He starts snacking on a nearby bush, gathering his strength. Then he realizes the Kano is doing the same, feasting upon his dead friend. The two opponents are locked in a deadly eating competition. The Kano has figured Brian's plan out. He limps his way forward, determined to cut Brian off from his nutrients. But Brian is a cunning hellspawn, and today it pays off to be a vegetarian. Brian goes back to his previous bush, eager to get back into the fight, but finds that the Kano is gone. He sees him limping away, trying to get to safety on the other side of the river.
There are more corpses here for the Kano to feed on. Brian cannot allow this. The terrain, however, is in Brian's disadvantage. His only advantage now is speed and open terrain, but the damn meat bull has planted himself in the river. The rocky terrain affects Brian's charge, and he gets dealt a nasty bite in return. The Kano is feasting on the other side of the river. Brian needs a moment to recuperate. Then he hears an ugly grunt by the river. He decides to check it out and finds an Omni-Raptor. A great opportunity to vent some of his frustration. Brian notices that the Kano has a Juvi friend joining him, and so he decides any further attempts to try and viciously murder the Kano will be futile. There is no proper food growing in this area, only grass and green leaves, and so Brian decides to take the long journey back home. The trip from South Plains to the east is long, and Brian is famished. We ain't had nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days. All of the sudden, he is attacked by another Carnotaurus. This one, however, is not as big as the one in South Plains. Being famished, however, takes a great toll on Brian's stamina, and he feels there is not much weight behind his attacks. The Kano's leg is fractured, and he quickly realizes his mistake in attacking Brian. But the long trip has taken its toll on the young Paki, and he realizes he needs to control his temper before he makes a fatal mistake. After a short rest, he seeks out his target again. He finds the Kano licking his wounds. After this encounter, Brian finally returns home and starts looking for food. Later on, when the sun has set, he goes for a drink and sees two raptors resting. As he approaches, they are clearly petrified of his majestic figure. Should he let them go? Brian knows what he is. Brian is evil.
And so life goes on, and Brian does what he can to enjoy himself, until suddenly he sees a Kano chasing another Paki. He eagerly joins the fight. The predator becomes the prey, until suddenly six million raptors join the fight, and Brian says to himself, Oh, hell no! The fruits in this region are very healthy. Brian notices his eyesight has improved drastically during nighttime. Eventually, as life would have it, Brian meets a female. For a moment, all his plans of world domination come to an end as the romance blossoms into a nest. Her name is Lucy and her head bump could knock any pucky off his feet. Slowly, a plan forms in Brian's head. With all the eggs in the nest, he could raise an army of hellspawn, covering all the lands in darkness. He could kill everyone.
Ryan goes for a drink as he tires of the noises from the nest. Kids should be seen, not heard. When Brian returns, he learns that Millie fell off the cliff, Robert ate Kate then suffered a heart attack, and Bert is probably lost. Only Max and Ben remain of the kids. Also, we would like to inform you that the lighting operator has been sacked. The Ceratosaurus came out of nowhere, stealthiest bastard ever recorded. The battle was swift and the carnage near complete. Ben and Brian managed to escape. Lucy and Max were turned into lunch and dessert. It dawns on Brian that all his dreams of power have failed. Now, what will he do? He still has so much petty hatred to share with the world. From what we've learned so far, Brian has shown incredible resilience. He has survived fat carnos, raptor ambushes, toxic cerebites and unscheduled server wipes. Perhaps he is indeed immortal. But he has also suffered loss on the emotional side, if such a thing is possible for a... For now, we will conclude the adventure of Brian, since he can't be killed. Perhaps we will revisit him later and see what he's up to. But that is up to you, the viewer. Until then, don't choke on your Tenonto chops. Evil was allowed to endure.